Hello, this is Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. In this video, I hope to give you the details of how to make the V cowl, including how to get this nice V shape and how to get the fringe on two sides of the front panel. The tutorial starts at the point where I finish weaving the body of the scarf. I'm ready to remove the woven piece from the loom to arrange it for weaving the warp back onto itself. What is not shown is the beginning of the project. I do have that in my other V-Cowl videos. But in short, after tying on your warp, leave 16 inches unwoven. That includes the knots and the waist. Weave a half inch or so header and then just start weaving the project. Stabilize the edge, the woven edge, with a piece of painter's tape. If you can't visualize this, just keep watching. You'll see it when I unroll the piece. I finished weaving and I've left a tail of about eight or nine inches hanging off of the right side. Green painter's tape. It uh, does not leave a residue and it, it holds well but it releases easily. And I put it on the underside just so that when I'm um, weaving the warp back into weft, I can see the the last line of work. So this holds my weft into place. I secure the end just a little bit here with fold the tape over it. And I fold the tape over so it doesn't stick to anything else. And it gives me something to grab onto when I go to peel it off. And now it's safe to release the brake and unroll the fabric from the front beam. So I'm going to go along and untie all these knots, which will completely release the weaving from the front bar. There, it's fully untied. Now pull it up over the front bar for now. Now, everything is nicely uh, held in place by the tape that I put on earlier at the very beginning of the weaving. So I can go ahead and take out uh, all this header, this yellow, that's in two different places so that this part can all hang freely. This is what we're going to be weaving into the end of the warp. The way I undo this header is I pull out the end loop and I carefully snip just the header. Uh, then it can be just pulled out like this. Then I have all these neat little bits that I can use to uh, tie choke ties and things as well. So the important part here is that this woven part is hanging over the front beam. If it's underneath, you're going to have problems where once this loops around and you will have um, firmly woven this um, to the loom. 
I've done that a number of times and I've had to um, take out the screws on the side of my loom in order to release this beam and release my cowl. The cowl was fine, it was beautiful, but I haven't kept on having to take apart the loom to remove the cowl from it. So um, don't make my mistake. <laughs> and by um, ensuring that, you need to uh, hang that over the front beam. And underneath we have the tie-on bar and it needs to be underneath the woven piece as well. Um, I also tried it with the piece hanging down in between the two and that doesn't work. So just remember that the woven fabric hangs over top of the bar and the tie-on bar. Now we have two very important um, pieces that is going to ensure that we can reattach the weaving under tension so that we can then uh, weave the beginning into the end here. So what I, what I have are two pieces of a cotton yarn. It's a heavy cotton. It's probably equivalent to an 8-8 or something like that. I don't know what it is. It's a chained cotton, I believe. You can use anything that's sturdy. It, uh, it's not important what this is. And then I have uh, tied them into loops. And the same thing, the length is not super important. Um, once tied, so they're um, just under three inches, so I don't know, get two six inch pieces of uh, six or seven inches long and tie them. Uh, what is more important is that the distance between the knot and the bottom loop is the same. So they need to be more or less identical loops of yarn. You also need a dowel, the width of the beam. So this dowel is, I'm thinking a quarter inch, maybe I'll measure it so I'll be able to tell you for sure. Again, I would say this is the uh, minimum. This is uh, a quarter inch dowel and it would be okay to go up from that, you know, three eight inch dowel would also work well, um, maybe even better. What we're going to do is we're going to take these two loops. I don't even know what this is called, where you take and you open it up and you pull it through. There's probably a specific kind of knot, but I don't know what it's called. So I attach these to the tie-on bar. like so. They're just looped through themselves. So we have those on either sticking out on either side of the woven scarf. And then the dowel goes through. So the dowel is hanging over the front of the weaving. like so. The weaving's on top of the tie-up bar and behind the dowel. So this is going to hang evenly and loosely down the front. I just let it pool on the floor. And then I give it a little bit. I pull it down just a bit. Um, like so. I center it along there. Everything's done with a, a light hand. And I make sure that the um, it's straight on the loom. So not like this or like this, but it's hanging with the, uh, the weft going straight across. Everything's lined up perpendicular, same space here and here. And then I just start to wind this on. What that extra beam does is uh, grab it and pulls the fabric into it the selvage edges are lined up nicely 
Okay, and then I put just a little bit of tension, not a lot. I find, I re-engage the brake here. So now there is some tension on here. Not too much or that um, dowel will start to bend. Now we have the woven piece back on the loom and under a little bit of tension. So the next stage is we can bring the beginning around and start to weave it back into itself. The important thing is when we start to weave it into itself um, is you probably don't want to twist in it. Maybe you do, but the way my V cowls are made are with no twist. It's not a Mobius scarf. So this edge here is going to come around and be the first edge here. So when I pull this up, I make sure that I have this same edge here. Like this. And I know that this inside edge here is going to be the first so here is the warp from the beginning of the project, which is now brought around and it's going to become the weft at the end here. So what I'm going to do is isolate each thread one at a time, starting from this first one. And I'm going to bring it through. After we have a few done, I don't have to hang on to the, the whole thing like that. But the first one goes in and it's beaten in place up against the other one, the previous line. And I just let the uh, tail hang out to the side here and I'll show you what I do with that in a moment. So sometimes it's nice to have the weight of the of this up on your lap so it doesn't pull out. It's the second one. And I like to keep that sort of perpendicular so I can make sure everything's happening as it should. Now you need to be very careful. Sometimes what looks like is the next one isn't. So for every pick, I check and I make sure I say, oh, okay, it was going over this one. Is it going under this one? Yes. So I have to make sure it keeps its over under um, alternation. So it goes under this last pick, so it's going to need to go over the first one on this edge. So after I've done a few picks, I tighten it up a notch because I put it on kind of um, with not a very high tension. So pro with putting a high tension on at the beginning, you might end up with a bowed effect. I found that it, um, with the dowel, it causes it to bend a little bit and your fell line is bowed. It's a frowning just from the the tension of rewinding it on. So if I put a low tension on it and weave a few picks um, before tightening it a notch, it um, ends up with a more consistent 
fill line here. Now the another important thing to do is not to pull this weft tightly. There's sort of a fine line between too loose and too tight. If you're going to air uh, in any way, probably loose is the way to go because uh, in the wet finishing, the threads will move around and fill any empty spaces. If you make it too tight, you end up with bunching along um, the, the, the line that you're pulling. So you have to give the yarn enough space to go over and under here on the corner. Don't pull this tight. Uh, it will pull through here and then just sort of create some puckering and it also create a, a, a some bunching up um, on this selvage edge which is now supposed to look like part of this weaving. Same with uh, beading. You have to think about your, your beat. If you are beading it too tightly you will um, disrupt the spacing in this direction. So you want to keep your beat consistent. Your, in this case, it's the the picks per inch. You have to keep it consistent with the um, ends per inch that you originally threaded here, because it's now turned. Right, the 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 ends per inch are now becoming the pp ppi, the picks per inch. So here's a little close up of the of the area here and how to keep the the thread straight as they transition from becoming warp to weft. So keep it enough uh, space there to do the over under at the edge without pulling it tight beat it so the PPI is consistent with what you see over here and never pull on the yarns because it will pull down the length and start puckering things up at this line you want that to not look like a seam line, like a, you want it to look like it was just um, part of the regular weaving of it all, not where two parts came together. We want the where the two parts come together to not be noticeable at all. What I love about the hand dyed yarns here is uh, there's a bit of variety in the color and when they cross over each other it gives you a beautiful bright clear color. Um, in this case I used a, a charcoal weft uh, on this part here and here and um, where I have the warp crossing over itself. Now we have purely the the hand dyed yarns and so uh, this part at the front that we're creating now, the um, diamond shape, the front of the V, is going to be a little brighter. It's not going to have any of the charcoal in it, it's just going to have the, the dyed colors in it, which look fabulous. So now I'm going to turn this around and show you uh, what I do with the ends here because I like to deal with those as I go. The, this selvage edge gets a little loose and uh, droopy so we want to keep that in with the other warp ends and uh, so we need to deal with these ends that have come off here before we go any further in the weaving. So I've lifted the loom up and put it on my little table. 
I've shown this part uh, in some of my other videos, but we'll continue it here again. So I released that first one that, that uh, I sort of kept in place with the tape there, that first uh, weft thread. And I like to um, do it in groups of four, so two and two when I twist my fringes. Now you can just um, take this bunch of four and tie it in, a, in an overhand knot right up snug with the fell line. That's a great option. Um, and then you can have a short fringe. Some people prefer the short fringe. I'm going to twist my fringes. Um, so I twist in one direction and then the other. I do have a YouTube video that just shows me twisting fringes. So um, you can take a look at that too. So I twist two and I twist two in the same direction, place them next to each other and then twist them back in the opposite direction. There are neat little tools that will do this um, where you can clip your yarn on and, uh, and wind it so that the yarn twists up. I prefer to do it by hand. So two and two, I'll twist them in pairs in one direction touch them together and twist them back in the other direction a knot at the end keeps everything in place and I like to line them up next to each other when I pull the knot tight just to make sure that they are both the same length now, this is another one of those instances where you need to be careful about when you're pulling on the yarns. So, so when you pull uh, the four threads out, don't pull it tightly or you're going to again cause some puckering here. You just want to have them um, have them loose. Don't give them any yanks. Again, if you're not sure how tight to go, err on the side of loose. These uh, edge, selvage edges, meaning this way, can be a little looser. They don't need to be pulled in tight because again, in the wet finishing, uh, they will move around. Everything will even out slightly. They won't have room to move around if you've pulled it tightly. There's a, a balance with yarn. Sometimes you want it tight to make it behave, and sometimes you need to give it some room and let it do what it wants to do to give it uh, the look that it you want and that it, it needs to look like a nice, drapey, beautiful cloth. So after I've secured the ends like this, I can move my loom around and continue weaving uh, the, the threads through. So I'm still weaving the uh, warp back into the uh, itself, warp into warp <laughs> as weft. And the lighting is just right, so I wanted to um, just turn on the camera here again and show you the uh, where I join the two up here and how I don't pull it tight so it almost looks like the um, there's too much of a gap there but we need to trust that there isn't uh, this is the 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 gray is the weft from the weaving of the main body of the loom so it was woven this way so it's packed um, fairly tight there on the edge as you can see and then where that edge comes together with the new selvage edge here these threads here 
um, it opens up a little bit. And I just lay the yarn in at that, this angle, and I don't pull it any tighter than that. Because what I found is after wet finishing, well, first of all, down here, you can see how it comes together quite nicely. And after wet finishing, that will, um, these, these threads here will shuffle over slightly and fill any gap that you might have there. And it'll be a good balanced weave. I've also found that you can see the, um, weft sort of rising a bit. It's coming along and then it's going up across here. And that's okay because this part here is not under tension. It's just loose. This is under quite a lot of tension, especially now um, I have the heddle raised. So these um, threads are very, very tight. So uh, when the uh, warp is released from the loom, then um, these kind of relax a little bit and then it all lines up again so to have it going up like that is actually a good thing if it was coming um, straight across then you might find that this relaxes shrinks down a little bit and this actually ends up being tighter than this and so um, you don't really want that so having it come along and then go up a little bit i find when i release it from the loom it ends up being even again and on the same note, the edge threads here, the selvage edge that you see are uh, the navy, they are not uh, pulled in tight as well. So I kind of let them uh, have their space here too. When I twist the fringes, I don't twist it so tight that the uh, selvage edges pull up. I find that once the tension is off the loom then everything sort of bounces and moves into place nicely the dark threads actually do move up slightly and um, especially after wet finishing um, everything moves into where it wants to be if I twist these um, too tightly and sort of nudge these up in here then I end up with a um, either a, uh, an undulating selvage edge or I find that uh, the V area, diamond shape at the front, um, actually pulls in and is smaller than the uh, body of the scarf and is pulled in tighter. So again, uh, leave room for the, the threads to breathe and uh, everything will come out in the wash. Okay, as you can see, we're getting down near the end of uh, the scarf here. We're uh, looking at the uh, the knots at the end of the warp and I like it that way. I like to use the entire warp and I only have maybe a couple inches of uh, waist at the end. I like to use all of the, the hand dyed yarn with no waist. So uh, it can get a little bit difficult at the end and I have trouble getting my hand through to pass the uh, weft from one side to the other so what I do is I make a little loop in my weft and put it through as far as I can and I take my uh, reed hook and I grab the, or my sleigh hook, sometimes it's called, and I grab the yarn and pull it through. Again, not pulling hard. And by the end, I have quite a small shed. And that's all right. There, that's the last one. Okay, so 
So that's the last weft. I'm going to turn it sideways and twist these fringes here. So the final weft has been put through and um, the end twisted into place here. We have one loose end here. That's the last row of the weft from the main body of the scarf and it will be uh, twisted into the fringes here at the end. Now before I undo the knots here, for that fringe I will hold everything in place with masking tape. It's painter's tape so it has no residue at all. And I just lay it down over the last row of the weaving. It holds everything in place so that when I um, undo my knots up here, the last few rows of the weaving don't go anywhere. And I usually fold it over here to give, so it doesn't stick on everything and to give me something to grab onto when I go to release it. So there, now I can uh, turn my loom around and I'm going to undo all these knots here. And then I'm going to uh, twist them just like the, uh, the ones I did on the side. So I've untied the scarf from the back I'm just going to pull the yarn through the heddle here. Everything is held in place because I put masking tape there. So the last few lines on the of the weft are not going to go anywhere. And I can just now release my brake and let everything roll off. So the, the piece is on the dowel here and because it's a temporary beam, this dowel, I can just release the dowel from its loops and the piece is released off the loom. So now I'm going to lay it down. I like to lay it down with a book on it or my iPad, watch something on Netflix, and uh, twist these fringes. Mm, and the colors are my favorites the blues and greens here. So I can put my iPad down like that as weight. Find a good show on Netflix or YouTube here <laughs> and uh, twist these fringes. The first one that I'm going to take is the one that's the uh, the weft from the main body, this charcoal gray, and I'm just going to release it from its tape here. I had it um, hooked in here so it wouldn't go anywhere, and it's going to be in the first group. I've just finished twisting the fringes on that last edge, and now this is the satisfying part uh, when I do my uh, painting videos. This is the part that everybody really likes is when the paint when the tape comes off. It's a little different for weaving. So it's going to distort it a little bit when you do that. And that's okay because we are going to be wet finishing. And it may fuzz it up a little bit. Again that's okay as well, because uh, 
it's all become going to be fold a little bit in the, in the finishing. So even right now we can see how the uh, seams are are neat. We we can hardly see where they where they connected. The V is nice and neat. We can't really see the uh, the difference between here and here because we didn't pull. So the next uh, stage is to wash it with some soap and agitation. And yes, it's 100% wool and it's not super wash, but we do need to change the web that we can see through into, uh, into a cloth. So here's the finished V cowl. It has, uh, the center part has come together like this and then this part um, can loop around the neckline. And I just wanted to show you how that part at the front looks, how neat it is, and how keeping it loose has made for a nice um, join there. And it's difficult to tell which part is the join, which is the, the part that we originally wove and which is the part we joined in later. It's very difficult to tell because of the, uh, the careful attention to the, to the tension. The colors are gorgeous. It's a little deeper in color here where we have the charcoal weft and then where the two ends of the warp come together with the dyed warp, it's a little bit of a, a bright shot of, of color there with the blues and greens. I'm very happy with how this turned out and I hope that this video has been of use to you. If you have found this video to be helpful, please consider supporting me on Patreon. This will help me to continue to make and share videos. The link is in the description below. Thank you for watching!